This session, I'm, I'll give you a quick overview, but the whole point of this is to introduce you to appreciative inquiry if you haven't experienced it before. Appreciative inquiry is like what? For me, there are two different metaphors that I use to explain this. One is to do with, um, I was on a, an advanced driving course, have any of you been on them? And you have a skid pan type thing where they put oil on the road and you have to try and steer the car. And uh, the instruction that people gave me was to, rather than look at the um, thing I thought I might bump into, so they said if you go into a skid when you're driving, often you'll look at the tree or the child in the middle of the road and, oh, I'm going to hit them. And if you put your focus on that child or the tree, the chances are you are going to hit them because that's what you're focused on. Um, so the thing to look for is the gap. So if you can see a little gap, just focus on that and somehow the car will work its way through that gap, was the instructions. And now appreciative inquiry is very like that. Rather than focusing on the tree or the child or the wall that you're frightened of hitting, which would be the problems and obstacles you come across, it's much more about focusing on what's the way forward, what is the thing that I can aim that's past that. Um, when I was explaining this, uh, someone in the class was a, a horse rider, and she said that when they are taught how to jump a fence or a hedge, rather than focusing on that hedge and the height of it, etc., you focus on the gap, the uh, spot, the other side of the hedge, so that it takes you past the hedge and onto that spot. It is appreciative, uh, which means that it's focusing on what works, what works well, um, building on the best of the past. So when we're looking at change, we're looking at what has worked well in the past that we can build on um, and we can leave the rest behind. And uh, inquiry is also very important because it is about asking questions and inquiring into what other people think and different points of view. So that fits very well with clean because clean is all about inquiry, asking questions. And often you will find that people that I've worked with have never actually had that experience of someone sitting down, giving them the attention and really listening to what they have to say and, and being interested in their point of view. Um, so I think that's where clean and appreciative inquiry can work very well together. The difference for me is clean, if you take pure clean, is neutral. It's neither plus nor minus the negative or the positive. It's what is. It's pure clean. Appreciative is aimed at looking at what works well, what's appreciating the best in things. Now, I know we often use a clean question like organisations when they're at their best. That's like what? So there is a similarity in that sense. Um, and uh, the idea is the more you focus on the positive, the, what works well, and it's not just positive, but what works well, the, the more of that you can create. So it sort of builds an energy. It links very much with the whole strengths-based um, approach to organisation development these days. Focus on the strengths and you'll get a lot more from the organisation. It's not to ignore the negative, but it's, for me it's about balancing things out. There's so much negative news around problems in organisations. Um, that's where you often may start, but the idea is to move people forward from that. Um, often you will find that um, uh, they say something like six to eight times uh, you need to balance um, positive with negative. So if you hear lots of negative stuff going on, often in organisations, you may need to say things six to eight times in a positive way before they will actually start to redress the balance. So it's about putting more emphasis on the positive to get things a little bit more balanced. Not that they're ever completely balanced, <coughs> but just to get nearer to that. Um, and the same with change. If you're um, taking people through a, a change approach, um, you've got new messages to give them. If you tell them six to eight times in different ways, they're more likely to hear it. I so often come across organisations that say, but I told them, we sent them an email, or we put it on the internet. Now, chances are there's so much information overload, they didn't even notice it, or they didn't know what it meant, or they didn't have time to think about it. So the inquiry part then gives you lots of opportunity to inquire into what is this change about? How can I contribute towards it? I'm an organisation consultant with 20 uh, plus years experience working in organisations and I have um, worked with oil companies and banks um, and currently I'm working with a European food company um, which has 
locations in Poland, Germany, the Ukraine, Spain, UK, US. Um, and they want to get diversity and inclusion embedded within the culture. And so um, for them, it's all part of their sustainability policy. Um, how can we have this company sustained over the years, working with different cultures? So in order to start that off, um, I've started to ask them about what works well in the organisation. Um, and one of the ways you can get uh, appreciative inquiry working with a challenge is, if the challenge is um, we're not sure whether people of different cultures are working well together, you can ask a question around when cultures, different cultures are working well together, what happens? And think of a time when you've had different nationalities working well together on a project. What made it successful? How did that work? So you're actually getting them to look at a problem and turning it around <coughs> to finding one instance that has worked. Um, and it can take time sometimes. I had a project where uh, one of the, the guys said to me, um, when I asked him, tell me a time that things have been excellent and you've really worked well and everything's been just as you'd like. <coughs> what, was, what was it like? And he looked at me and says, well, we don't have any of those around here. <laughs> um, and then it went on, you know, and it was like, oh, just tell me a time that was slightly better than another. You know, well, I suppose there was. So sometimes you have to just gradually, gradually draw them out because it's not their normal way of thinking.